One of the things that we found, um, and again this comes directly from parents and from young people, is that they feel the more information they have, the more well positioned they are and the more assertive they can be. What's your experience in terms of the information that families get? Information for families with a youngster with a particular disability can be very fragmented, mm. is, is my experience. Um, if, if my disability is autism, then the National Autistic Society has loads and loads to tell me about particular issues to do with being on the autistic spectrum. What it may not be able to tell me is what's going on in my locality that would include me. Yeah. So I have to go somewhere else to get that information. <laughs> And when I get there, in my locality, nobody can quite tell me whether the building's accessible or there's a bus that stops outside, or whether if I'm a nervous autistic child, there'll be somebody who'll buddy me on the bus to get me to the swimming pool in the first place. That sense of information being in lots and lots and lots of different boxes, mm. each of which has a lid and a key, mm. and if you don't give me the key and I don't know how to open the lid, what's the point of the information being there in the first place? Um, the sense of joined up working that can provide local access to information, whether it's on school notice boards or on children's centre websites or on youth service chat room sites or whatever, is that's absolutely vital. And I'm not sharing my information with you is another means of saying I have power over it and therefore I have power over you and aren't I clever? And it's not acceptable. From my point of view as Children's mm. Commissioner, if you're not putting the child and their needs at the heart of what you're doing, you're not doing your job. Um, it's dead simple, really. Yeah. And that includes not doing your job as a parent if you're not putting your child first, but yourself. Um, pretty sticky, but very important to say. It kind of solves it all, though, doesn't it? If you do have... Uh, if you put families at the centre of the information sharing, if, it, if it's their information and they're in control of it and they can give the consents, that's the thing that would make a real difference, isn't it, in terms of information sharing between agencies and between services? I mean, my, my perspective on information is kind of a bit simplistic, really. Yeah. Um, if it's information about me and you hold it, then I can ask you for it yeah. and you shouldn't be able to say no. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, at, at the heart of all of this is um, people losing their suspicions of each other. Um, now that's as big a challenge on families as it is on anybody else. Um, if you've had a series of very hard times over getting what you need for your child, then your natural approach to the services concerned will be that you suspect them. So you may have somebody who, from every good intention you can think of, is coming to you to try to offer to help you, and your previous experience leads you to be suspicious rather than open or welcoming. And I know it's a big, tough ask, but they probably mean it, actually. <laughs> they probably mean that they want to help you, and it, it may have been tough in the past, but if the offer is there, and if the changes to special needs and disability legislation are going to mean anything, then yet again we're asking, can we help you? <laughs>